So coming hot off the trail of talking about how to get your truck ready for, or your vehicle in general, ready for an Alaskan winter and kind of just explaining the differences. Today, uh, we're gonna be doing a video talking about the survival essentials for a truck or a vehicle in general. If you have any vehicle in Alaska, these are some of the survival essentials you'll have. Now, I'm not necessarily gonna bring them out and show them because they're pretty self-explanatory, but first starting off, you know, we talked about in the previous video, winterizing and having your vehicle properly equipped. Another thing too that really honestly helps with like survival situations or avoiding it in general or what I would consider a survival essential is really good tires. And not just really good tires, but practicing with those tires. Usually um, if you want a more affordable uh, tire for that is totally rated for Alaska, the Bridgestone Blizzaks are pretty hard to go wrong with. Uh, this truck is running Nokian Rotivas on it and those are pretty good to go with. Um, they aren't all-terrain, so you do have to bear that in mind that they're not the most winter-specific tire, but they are good year-round. Yokohama, Yokohama Geolanders are pretty good. Nitto Ridge Grapplers are pretty good as well. So unfortunately, none of those tires I mentioned are particularly cheap. You know, you're looking at about $250 to $300 a tire, depending where you go um, for all of those options, but they are really well-performing tires. And once again, um, they can get you out of or prevent you from getting into a lot of bad situations. So some more survival specific kind of gear that I carry in this truck. Of course, first starting it off, you know, with my kind of survival background, I have a full on survival kit that is specifically designed for just like me as a person. I don't often take a whole lot of people on winter adventures or when I drive, you know, uh, go on road trips, it's usually just myself. So I have a system that is a one person setup. So I have a zero degree rated bag. And honestly, the zero degree rated bags may not be the most cold ready bags. Of course, you can get negative 20, negative 40 bags. Um, but the zero for me strikes a really good balance because for most of my adventures, I'm not going to be going out when it's negative 40. I'm not going to be going out on adventures when it's negative 20. So oftentimes the zero degree bag for me works just fine. Of course, too, if you ever need in a pinch, something like a zero degree bag can be more warm if you have um, liner bags, if you wear thick, heavy clothing in your sleeping bag. So you can beef it up. And another thing to note is a lot of your effectiveness with a sleeping bag comes from the mattress that it's on. So I have a very robust, um, I believe the R value is close to seven. I think it's like 6.9 R value. Uh, I have a Thermarest um, Neo Air, I believe it is. Maybe it's not Neo. It's no, it's an X Therm. There we go. Uh, air pad with it, and that one is a 6.9, if I remember correctly, on the R value. It is a pretty heavy duty. Um, or pretty warm, like very well insulated sleeping pad. And so those two in combination give me a really good uh, ability to go down to cold temperatures and sleep with them. On top of that too, I carry an asymmetrical tarp for you know potentially you know having like a snow shield and then I carry a robust one person sleep, uh, tent so I can set up the uh, tarp however I need it I can set up the uh, tent however I need it and then I have a robust sleep system so that's kind of the core of course and I have some mountain house meals I have bottles of water in here um, I usually have like a Gatorade as well for electrolytes and then of course um, if I didn't already mention it, I have the Mountain House meals, I have a jet boil. So I do have options, of course, like my ferro rod and matches and stuff for starting fires traditionally. But at the same time too, in temperatures like it is right now, um, I can use my jet boil and use that to heat up water rapidly and cook food and overall just, you know, provide for that. I do also have things like cliff bars, uh, you know, granola bars, just general fast foods, um, things like uh, peanut butter uh, and those little like squeeze pouches. So, you know, quick calories, quick proteins to use in survival situations. On top of that too, once again, you know, I have a self-sufficient backpack that has a sleep system set up, but I also have an ax, I have a saw, I have a survival knife in case I need to go old school and, you know, build a shelter if I need to go old school, start a fire traditionally, I have the means and ability to start fires either way. So usually um, 
So that's what I have in the vehicle all winter long. Once again, a solid survival sleep system and the ability to make shelter, make fire, gather and harvest materials from the, the woods. So I have that stuff and it's all once again in a backpack so that if I have to ditch the truck for whatever reason, I can carry all of this equipment away from the truck. So I tried to keep it man portable where, you know, I have a knife that I can strap onto a belt. I have an ax that I can put in the pack. I have a saw that can be put in the pack, right? And I have a backpack that is robust that can be used to carry stuff away from the truck. So if for whatever reason the truck needs to be abandoned or I need to leave the truck, all of my stuff is portable. So on top of that too, um, other good things to have are things like a snow shovel. It's pretty basic, but a shovel is pretty important. Um, other things you can carry, I don't have personally in the truck, is traction boards. Um, the biggest reason why you don't see a lot of people with traction boards is that, to be honest, they're pretty big and bulky and kind of hard to carry. So I don't have them currently in the truck, but a shovel can effectively do most of what a traction board can. And once again, what's nice about Alaska is if you ever need quick makeshift traction boards, at least in the winter and to an extent in the summer, um, pine boughs make a really good traction board. If you get enough of them, you can shove them under your tires. And I have used those in a pinch. So once again, having the ax, having a shovel to dig yourself out and you know harvest those pine boughs in an expedient manner can really help. So on top of that, with when it comes to recovery gear, I also have, you know, your general recovery straps uh, of varying lengths and thicknesses. I have some robust versions and some lighter weight ones. Usually when I'm recovering people, I'll use the lighter weight or thinner um, recovery straps and then the thicker ones when I need to be recovered because usually this truck's a little bit heavy, so it can be hard. Um, so those are the kind of two options as far as that goes. Of course, too, having the four-wheel drive and four-wheel low and rear lockers. This one unfortunately does not have rear lockers, but it does have um, four low, so it can pull itself out of a great many things. That's kind of what I love about the Tundra is um, it can pull itself out of a lot of things uh, just with four low itself. But anyways, um, as far as it goes, I do have those other things that I totally recommend carrying, you know, uh, when it comes to recovery gear are things like jumper cables. I feel like jumper cables get overlooked a lot, but you never know, not necessarily with myself, but with a lot of people, um, you never know when a bad battery or if it gets too cold and someone's battery isn't quite up to snuff and it dies out in the field or you know uh, if it just dies in general you got jumper cables mine are a little bit newer school and i kind of like the version that i have uh, they have a little indicator on them now granted hopefully you know how to use jumper cables but mine are kind of dummy proof uh, because i might not be the one hooking them up so they have like a little um, led indicator uh, built into them so it it shows if your connection is proper, it will have like a green light. So you don't necessarily have to sit there and crank and be like, is it getting juice? Is it not? Uh, because sometimes you genuinely don't know. And I have been in situations, especially uh, in the dark where, you know, um, maybe the cables, not so much the orientation, because of course it's kind of hard to get the black and red cables mixed up. But um, what is really handy is to know if your leads are making good connections from the good battery to the bad battery. So that's that's what I like about that indicator is it shows that, you know, not only is it correctly oriented, you know, you have your red on your hot side and you have your black on your ground, but that it's also um, properly connected. Your leads are making good battery connection. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And uh, just the ones that I have, once again, totally don't need that part, but jumper cables are nice for that reason. So that basically sums up all of the uh, winter survival essentials. Of course, I do have a small like first aid um, kit in a um, Pelican case, and I have a few other things um, in the truck for just general survival purposes. But for the most part, um, that's like the core winter survival essentials um, to a truck and to a vehicle as a whole. And whether you're running a car, an SUV, a truck, you know, these are all things that within reason you should be able to carry. Once again, the traction boards might be a little bit hard for like an economy car, but you could always strap them to your rooftop. Um, potentially with my truck, it'd be easy enough to throw them in the bed. But 
uh, yeah, so for sure though, a shovel and an ax can go a long way. And once again, I like the redundancies of having a survival knife, you know, a saw and an ax along paired with my full on like jet boil sleep system because if I do need to hunker down and build a shelter, build a sleep system, I have the ability to do that. But if it's a pinch or really cold or in a pinch, I have the ability to immediately set up shop with, you know, the ASIM tarp, the tent, the sleeping bag, the sleeping pad, all of that is immediately ready to go and completely accessible. So yeah, those are the survival essentials to my truck. Um, other things, uh, so yeah, that basically covers all, I think, the, the major bases for, you know, being out in the cold. It's not impossible. And once again, two things that you should always consider um, is dressing according accordingly for the weather. Uh, a couple other things I almost forgot to mention that you guys are probably seeing is I do always carry a shell jacket in here. And then underneath the shell jacket, you'll probably see I have a little hoodie. These are not the most robust things. And once again, I always recommend dress appropriately or bring the right stuff you know whenever you go out you know know what you're going to be doing like know where you're going to be driving and bring the right um, clothing that is appropriate for those temperatures so once again you know I'm not wearing a you know little t-shirt right now short sleeve t-shirt I'm wearing you know wool um, as my base layer and then I'm wearing you know a nice um, Patagon Patagonia hoodie that gives me good insulation so you know I'm wearing warm clothing for these temperatures you know my shoes are appropriate I'm wearing mucklucks um, for my shoes. So everything on me is appropriate. And as I've talked about in many survival videos, like your first and most essential like survival um, kind of thing that you can do for yourself is make sure that you're properly dressed for your conditions. Make sure that you have, you know, face mask and stuff like that. Uh, one thing I should also mention too, almost forgot to mention, is that, you know, I do have a good amount of flashlights and mittens in this truck. So I have mittens, I have wool socks, and I have, um, you know, flashlights and different odds and ends and the mittens and socks can go a long way once again I don't think of them so much as if you're stranded using the wool socks but you know if you're coming back from an excursion or say you needed to um, you know cancel an excursion like say you were going out and things just went sideways you know being able to have the things like the mittens and the wool socks like say you did get your feet wet um, immediately having a dry pair and I have a couple dry pairs of you know 100% to 80% wool socks in the truck so that I know for sure there's dry socks in here. Um, there's once again mittens that I can use to cover my um, hands, you know, having hats, just extra winter gear because, you know, even if you do dress properly for your conditions, you know, once again, if you're out and you get wet, your snow machine goes through the water, even if you don't, you know, like fully sink your snow machine or yourself, um, you know, if your feet get wet, can be a really big killer. So, you know, once again, you can't always uh, anticipate everything, but just having practical preparations like extra pairs of socks, extra pairs of gloves, extra pairs of mittens, extra pairs of everything uh, in your truck so that it's kind of a safe haven to go to is another big deal. So that is stuff almost forgot to mention, but yeah, so like extra shell, extra hoodie, extra, you know, uh, mittens, socks, just the basic core essentials that can get wet can get gross and be replaceable. So anyways, those are my wintertime survival essentials for the Alaskan truck and um, Alaskan vehicles as a whole. I think it's easy to carry all this stuff. Make sure you're prepared. Um, and yeah, that's all I have to say, guys. God bless and I'm out.